Join the wave. Toledo Jeep Fest is back. Toledo Jeep Fest, presented by Dana, is August 2nd through the 4th, downtown Toledo. Catch the Yark All Jeep Parade, Park and Shine Show, and the Vendor Midway. Live music, delicious food, and fun for the entire family. Details at ToledoJeepFest.com. Hey, I'm Tony, and welcome to the Jeep Talk Show, the premier show for Jeep enthusiasts and hardcore off-roaders. I guess that would be Zabo. That would be the, the, our hardcore <laughs> off-roader. He's a hardcore one <laughs> right now, definitely. Oh, my gosh. Getting whether, harder core as the day goes on. Yeah, whether you're new to the Jeep world or a seasoned Jeeper, we've got you covered with the latest news, tips, and advice to help you get the most out of your Jeep. You know, I'm afraid he's going to get that damn thing built up. He's not going to have any challenge. And he's just going, eh, what, what, what can I get? What can I do next? <laughs> yeah. What's how, the do point? I, how do I challenge this uh, 426 I'm putting in it? Oh, that's right. Ooh. I forgot he, sees, he is putting a Hemi in there, isn't he? Because he <laughs> yeah. just didn't have enough umph uh, out there at the, you know, I wish, I know you wanted to. I wish you could have come because it was fun uh, seeing that group because uh, there was a, a harder uh, core group uh, on the fourth annual Jeep Talk Show off-road event. And uh, I was with the, the easy group, but it did, did more difficult stuff. Uh, than what I had done, but it was fun. Uh, we we crossed paths, and uh, uh, Zabo was trying to cl- climb up an embankment. I forget which one it was. You may remember it, uh, Larry, just from the chat on the uh, on Discord. Uh, but uh, a couple of people had to be winched up it, and uh, and but I think I can't remember if Rick was if he got winched or not. I don't think so. So it was. It's interesting how you see some of the majorly built Jeeps having difficulties. And then you have uh, like uh, Rick's TJ that was able to uh, d- able to accomplish it. I mean, it, it's the length, it's the tires, it's the uh, the balls of the driver. <laughs> yeah, and then there's 3, that three thousand pounds lighter. Yeah. Oh, that's very true. That's very true. All right, on tonight's episode, a modern day Jeep rust. God, you know Ugh. that was something that we I just hated. Uh, there was so many rusty vehicles back in like the the late seventies, early uh, early eighties. Uh, nice uh, off road vehicles that were just very rusty. And you know, I, we I mean, it's not like we're right on the Gulf. It's like sixty miles away uh, from uh, where I've lived. And uh, but you still get this rust. I mean, my Nova, the the uh, wheel wells uh, in the rear uh, rusted out on me, and it was just so depressing to see that type of thing. And nobody knew. I that. Well, I, I think that's why we live in California, by the way. Mm-hmm. And and, no, and nobody knew how to do bondo properly because you could put six <laughs> inches of thick bondo to fix that uh, fix that fender. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that would fall off, you know, oh, like a mud clod. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, but yeah, that's uh, modern day Jeep rust. Uh, so we'll be talking about that. And newbie nuggets. Wendy shares the kinds of animals you may see on the trails. Is this a derogatory thing? Are you talking about the people that don't pick up after themselves? You know, I don't know. You have to listen. <laughs> Did you find Bigfoot out there? Yes. Sasquatch. <laughs> In uh, Fabricating Frenzy with Larry, other tools you need for the trail. Oh, this is good. I like this one. This could go along with the the animals that are out there on the trail. <laughs> yeah. <I was> <laughs> a shovel. Say. Possibly. <laughs> <laughs> and then the most have stuff for your Jeep. One person hard top and storage solution say it isn't so seriously oh uh, uh, yeah absolutely One person? you know i've, really I've known cool. about this for a while and uh, i was just uh, cruising around looking for something to to report on today and i saw this i went oh of course this is wonderful they show women using it you know so it's it's not really a modern day good advertising but it's like even a woman can do it <laughs> great i know <laughs> all right uh so let's get let's get this show started well i guess technically it has started are you ready? It's time for the Jeep Talk Show with hosts Tony, Josh, Wendy, and Chuck. Well, howdy, it's Wendy, and in this episode, what animals do you see when you wheel? Hmm. hmm. Hi, I'm Larry, and when was the last time you broke down on the trail? Oh, man. Do you guys ever see <laughs> bobcats? I don't know if they're, if they're uh, in your area or not. We have bobcats here. I've never yeah. seen one. Uh, but I've uh, recently seen them on uh, uh, the Tic Tac and uh, Instagram, and they just look like a, a, a fun, uh, claw-you-to-death animal to, to have. Yeah, bigger yeah. than life-size cat, kitty cat. I, I wouldn't try to hold that one. Cute, well. or, or give them a bath. That would be the fun yeah. thing. <laughs> 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 All right, so, uh, oh, let's, uh, yeah, we have a, a voicemail here from DR. I'm not used to the voicemails. You guys call in the voicemails. We love hearing from you. Jeep Talk Show. This is me, DR, out in Utah. Uh, I just finished listening to 
uh, an interview. I don't know if it was an interview or what, but with Greg Henderson on there. And uh, I am a Patreon subscriber now. I'm a cheapskate, but I bought the <laughs> cheapest one. I have to do that because I'm poor, I guess. I don't know. I don't think I'm – I'm poor. My wife is rich. But anyways, uh, <laughs> listen to that. So I'm like, Greg, when you went up to Forest Service, and I really like Greg. I really do. I respect him because I, I, I'm a Scotsman, and I do have a kilt. And I wear my oh, kill. My. And if the Forest Service told me one damn time that I could not wear my fucking kill, I guarantee you I would have my balls and I would show them I am going to wear my kill. Greg, grow some balls. <laughs> Tell them you're doing oh, something my. for them. And you'll Jeez. dress any goddamn way you want to. That's oh, bullshit. My God. I, don't, I don't like the Forest Service, but I do like them. They do do good things, but they, yeah, do a lot of shady shit, too. <laughs> uh, that's why we have people like the Blue Coalition, Blue Ribbon Coalition deal. Anyways, uh, keep up the good work. Love the show. Now, whenever he said, <laughs> Greg, show them your balls, I thought he was talking about something, some pants that are yeah. kind of like the cr- uh, crotchless panties or something. <laughs> Those are two words that never go together, kilt and balls. <laughs> yes. I'm just saying. <laughs> well, and wait a minute, and show me. Like, that's and not show me, yeah. <laughs> Missouri is a show me state, but you don't want to get all those together. <laughs> that's right. That's not, not good. <laughs> so I, I don't know if both of you guys know about this, and I think it was something that came about on our roundtable uh, conversation. Uh, do you know that I recommended to Greg to uh, get some rock lights for his uh, kilt? I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> Wendy's going to shake her head. I can see that. Like, okay. Yeah. yeah. You may not want to, though. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, exactly. some, some nice little uh, mirror placements, and you got a disco ball, oh, too. A, a, a oh, pair. Boy. <laughs> Two a pair oh, of disco balls. First story. Okay. Listen, let's oh. move on with the show, Tony. Come on now. Come on, man. I was on a roll. <laughs> Family show. Family show. You know, and what Jeeps. else rolls? Balls roll. Anyway, uh, so what top selling uh, Jeep doesn't have a Jeep badge? Anyone? Anyone? Uh, the Compass? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, not shouldn't have a Jeep badge. <laughs> I see. <laughs> so nope, th- no idea. So they're talking about uh, the Grand Wagoneer and the Wagoneer, the most expensive mm-hmm. Jeep known to mankind that didn't, right. that didn't come from America's most wanted 4 by 4 So that, that trail rated. No, not at all. So uh, these okay. are these are. Does it cost too much to get them on the get in the dirt and get them dirty? Sh- it, too much to clean it. So Stellantis exactly. has posted its uh, quarter, uh, second quarter and uh, H1 sales for 2024 with overall group sales plummeting by 21 and 16% respectively. In the oh USA, boy. all brands except for Alfa Romeo and Fiat, this pisses me off, saw what? a decline in sales. No, mo- that's big, but they got to have that wrong. It must have <laughs> it's, it's because of Europe. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Among uh, the Jeep, Dodge, Ram, and Chrysler brands, the Wagoneer and Grand Wagoneer, I can't speak, uh, are the only individual models that enjoyed soaring, not just increased sales, soaring sales. There's a, there's a marketing word for you. <laughs> yeah. Soaring. We sold four. They're soaring. <laughs> Making them Jeep's best-selling vehicles, even though they don't wear Jeep badge. And hmm. although this could change soon, especially because of the sales, I suspect. <laughs> well, I, I you, we've speechless. all seen we've all seen those wagoneers, and they're really nice oh, vehicles. We course. know a couple. We yeah. know a couple of people with them. Yep. I gorgeous. just can't imagine taking that big old thing out on a trail, beating up on the rocks. And no, you'd be crying. Well, you don't use it as a tow vehicle. Uh, and right, you can, it, it sleeps seventy five. And <laughs> especially with that rooftop tent. Yeah. yeah. And if there's only if there's only seven of you, you got you know, it's like being on the Starship Enterprise. There's a, a thousand feet radius so from That's you. That's right. You got it. You got it. <laughs> yeah, they are very nice. But my God, we know we've complained a lot about the prices on these things. Uh eighty six, hundred, hundred and fifteen thousand uh, dollars mm-hmm. for a Grand Wagoneer. Um, but I mean I'm I'm glad Jeep is building something that people are embracing. It just seems I guess my soul wants it to be, you know, like a Wrangler or a Gladiator. Well, why do you think you got the uh, 392 back for another year? Yes. Because of of sales, right? Yeah. Right. People want it. Stupid to get rid of it. 
So an impressive 16,734 Wagoneers were sold in Q2 of 2024, an increase of, get this, 107% compared to the same period last year. Hmm. That's good. But isn't it surprising to you? It just surprises me that, uh, uh, number one, people have that kind of, uh, well, I'm not going to say money, credit. (laughs) <laughs> well, credit yeah, and, to buy exactly. what kind of job, and and what kind of job do they have? To, That's what I want. Yeah, to, to buy a house on wheels. Because <laughs> apparently, I I have the wrong job. So. <laughs> oh, I know. It just surprises me. And you see these uh, these people with uh, side by sides and huge uh, travel trailers and huge yeah uh, dually Crazy. pickups to pull it all around and uh, yeah, it's just amazing. You know what? I saw an ad for a. It was on Facebook Marketplace or whatever. They were. It was a two thousand and what is it? What year are we in? 24, 23 Ford dually four door truck. They wanted a hundred and twenty some thousand dollars for it. I'm like, Oh yeah. Wait, what? I mean, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I, and it's a Ford, you mm-hmm. know, like why anyway? Yeah. It's well, prices we, are crazy. I love full size yeah. trucks. I would love to have a, a full size truck. And, oh, and I started oh, off with yeah. Chevy's and then moved over to Ford. And, uh, the, the Ford was the first, I had a Ford F-150, 89 Ford F-150, bought it used, and it was the first vehicle I ever had that was went over 100,000 miles. And that was very impressive to me. Wow. Yeah, but you don't have to, you, you can just pick any brand out there, and you can yeah. get over 100, you can get over 100 grand For real anything quick. Mm-hmm. I know. We were talking about Wagoneers over $100,000 almost two years ago. Yeah, oh, exactly. Yeah, yeah no, uh, Absolutely. Um, so I don't know, I I guess I would change my tune if I, if I had that kind of money, maybe I would buy a Wagoneer, uh, no offense to Bill, but I think I'd get the Grand Wagoneer just because, you know, it's, it's a grand. So why not? Yeah. 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 I mean, if you got the money for it, it's going to cost you 40 more grand, but whatever. So the interesting (laughs) thing is, is that they're, they're using, and I don't know if this is exclusive or not. One of you guys can correct me if you know, uh, they're using the hurricane engine in the Wagoneers. And, uh, I'm, I mean, I'm hearing uh, very impressive results, uh, of the, that engine, uh, both from, uh, John with the Grand Wagoneer and Bill with the, uh, the Wagoneer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They both rave about those vehicles. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I know John really likes it obviously because of that Hemi <laughs> and, uh, you know, Bill's already got a Hemi. Well, that's right. He's not, he, he doesn't have the hurricane in it. He has a Hemi in that one. That's right. Right. And then Bill with this hurricane. I mean, he compares it with his, uh, with his Hemi that he's got in his Jeep. So it's got, he, he, his words, he says it's got more power. Yeah. So. I see that. Hmm. So, uh, the, the, the Q2, uh, increased sales 107% is remarkable when considering the full size SUV base MSRP, uh, of 62,945. Oh yeah. Give me a break. Uh, I mean, Where? I mean that's what you it says, but <laughs> yeah. Oh, did Not you want California. tires with that? Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> How are you going to roll, you know, without tires? So the, you need a key. <laughs> yeah. The Grand Wagoneer sales, uh, have also increased with 4,005, uh, 4, 4, uh, examples leaving showroom floors in the second quarter. This re- represents a 24% uptick in sales. Uh, while it, this is positive, uh, start the rest of the lineup has dismal sales in comparison. Well, part of that's the interest rate. I mean, I think if you're in that yes. higher range of dollars, you don't care what the interest rate is. You're probably paying cash. But the rest of us working people's, you know, we we have those lower price cars. We need to be able to finance mm-hmm. stuff. So no, I'm glad you mentioned rates, that. Stuff. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned Crazy. that. I, I fully believe that. I mean, uh, and, and if uh, anybody was alive in the, the early 80s, these aren't any kind of bad interest rates that are going on right Correct. now. But they're, yeah. they're certainly a lot worse than what they were, which was what, a negative yeah. two? They actually paid you money if you borrowed or I something? Was, yeah, it was crazy. <laughs> yeah, but in early 80s, this was a, this was the price of your house. Oh, yeah, yeah this, this was a, this would be a really nice house in the early 80s. <laughs> Very yeah. nice house. Because I, I think they were around yeah, 70, you, 75,000 back in the early 80s. And today you're looking at borrowing a hundred thousand, borrowing for a hundred thousand dollar vehicle at six to ten percent interest. Yeah, depending what for, on where. What for max seven years? Yeah, that's a pretty stout payment. Yeah, that's a huge payment. Yeah, I mean that is beyond a house payment. Oh yeah, I remember my mom and dad uh, complaining about uh, three year uh, automobile loans. Why in the world would I want to pay for an automobile for three years? Of course, they yeah, didn't last as long back seven. then either. No. 
No, it used to be if you get anywhere close to 100,000 miles, you were in a load net thing. Oh, yeah. Grandmawing it. So oh, yeah. the, uh, the, the worst offender by far is the Cherokee, which saw a 89% decline in sales. Of course, well, the duh. Cherokee was killed off earlier this year, which explains the lower figures. But that hit alone was severely uh, has a severely accepted, uh, affected Jeep. The Renegade, also discontinued, <laughs> saw a 69% reduction in sales uh, with just 1,583 units sold in Q2. Kind of makes yeah. sense. If you discontinue a car, you can't get those numbers yeah. up. Low mm-hmm. sales. Huh. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> Surprise. Even, yeah, even the popular Wrangler and Grand Cherokee suffered reduced sales. The Wrangler managed 38,896 sales, a negative 17%. Uh, decline while the Grand Cherokee came in at 52,296 with a negative 26% decline. So, so I have a question on that Wrangler. Sure. I mean, that might be, that might be general, mm-hmm. but do you think part of it is there's so many options now you've got the, you know, hybrid there's, you know, all these different things with the Wranglers, people just too many decisions. And so they go elsewhere or are they buying older Jeeps and then just hanging on to them and fixing them up? And that's why they're not buying new. Cause it's not, conducive to get into that kind of a payment well you know i don't have um ford bronco sales here but uh, you got to wonder is are is the ford bronco taken away from regular sales i don't know i yeah, I, I heard I, it was low though i they're struggling too i think mm-hmm. yeah i think this is all interest rates and inflation myself absolutely yeah i like that because that means and i guess you can't argue that whenever you're working at uh, jeep and that's why they've had turnover of uh some upper management there is like, well, too bad, too bad, too sad sale. You need to figure out a way. Yeah. Yeah. Cause even now those uh, upgrade parts that you're going to have to buy, cause everybody has to, they're going to cost you more too. So it's, mm-hmm. uh, it's going to cost you all the, way, all the way across the board. Mm-hmm. Time to get an old TJ and a 4.0 that goes 300,000 miles. <laughs> there you go. All right, Larry, uh, I was uh, glad you were able to join us. We were, and, and I'm not uh, telling uh, telling off on anything here. It was just uh, Larry was having, I mean, around July the 4th, it's, you know, it's difficult to get on here and record. And Larry had some stuff that came up, and uh, we uh, we were going to record on uh, Friday and then uh, not, and then we're recording on Saturday. Uh, but I'm glad you could join us, Larry, because as far as I know, uh, Larry, you're the only one here between us three that has had corrosion issues with your, uh, oh, yeah. your Jeep. Yeah, so uh, I have an 18 JL. Actually, you know, it was the the first year for the JL. And I've had the, as you see in the show notes here, the corrosion around the door hinges. Uh, All four doors had to be repainted, which was kind of nice because they were all pinstriped up. So we got a new paint job on (laughs) it. Did you ask them to match the pinstripes with the uh, the fenders and stuff? Yeah. (laughs) That's. That's an honor to have those Ponderosa pinstripes, we call them. You know, it's an honor. And uh, I also had it on the hood. Oh. So the interesting thing, you know, it's it's 100% corrosion because those are all, I believe it's really the aluminum or magnesium panels. Mm. So I even had it on the edge of the hood just behind the uh, the latches. So, yeah, the hood is repainted, all four doors. And uh, well, you've had the hood you know, replaced, right? Because of uh, hail damage, hail, yeah. But I, it was painted before that. Oh, so and the corrosion you, was fixed before you damaged it with hail, correct? <laughs> correct. <laughs> and even, even uh, Steve, one of our team members, yep. he's had his he's had his Jeep fi- fixed twice. So, yeah, that corrosion on a JL, it's a real thing. And, uh, you know, if you get any of that bubbling around the hinges or anywhere on that hood, make sure you get that in there because you are, you are on a time clock because I, I had, because I've got a fair amount of miles on my 18. I've almost got 135,000 on it. At the time, I only had about another 1,500 miles I could have went before they wouldn't have fixed it. My goodness. Wow. So, um, what do you think it is, Larry? I mean, uh, you mentioned the, uh, the aluminum doors. Is this just a uh, a mixed metal uh, interaction that's causing the corrosion? Metal, yeah, uh, so I, steel, or something uh, that attached to aluminum? So yeah, so I've heard a couple things, right? I've heard it, heard it's the uh, interaction of the uh, the hinge on the door, which sounds feasible until I got to the hood, and 
that really doesn't that doesn't apply there. So I'm almost wondering if this isn't a paint prep issue. Hmm. So, you know, around the hinges, I can see maybe there's some interaction. But like I said, once you got to my hood that had it on the leading edge, I almost think that it's oh, I see some kind saying. of yeah, some kind of prep issue or something there that, that's causing that. Now I haven't I haven't heard of anybody having it on their tailgate yet. Because I would think that would be the next natural place. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because the tub itself is all steel. But you know, the other uh, non-steel panel is is the uh, the rear swing out. And I've not heard of anybody needing that replaced or repainted yet. But, you know, it could just be because people don't look at it very well either. Mm-hmm. Um, Greg, you know, I had uh, somebody uh, attack the, uh, the Gladiator and they uh, damaged uh, the front part of the hood. And uh, Greg uh, Henderson had told me to make sure that whoever does the the body work that does you know fixes that, uh, make sure they do not remove the hood uh, from your gladiator because that breaks the paint because they they paint it with the hood on it apparently. Correct. Yeah. So wow. uh, if you take it off, then the the paint that's you know between the hinge and the hood is going to crack and then lead potentially lead to uh, corrosion. Yeah, so what I did when when my uh, hood was damaged because of hail, I actually ran around the hinge with the razor blade just to make sure the paint, because he's 100% right. When they painted it, they painted the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And you got to be careful when you do that with the hinge. When you you pop it free, you you don't break the paint, if you will. So I cut it. To make sure that the paint didn't didn't uh, crack in those areas, and I was able to get it all back lined up pretty fairly well. Mm-hmm. Did you uh, do any kind of uh, put anything down on the the metal part of the hood, the aluminum part of the hood where the the hinge attaches, like maybe some primer or or something, something that you could cover up that aluminum? Yeah, I just I just put some wax on it, and that was about it because I, I didn't. I don't know if I put primer or anything on it because if you are, if you're not careful with that, if there's any issues with the interaction of the primer you put on and the rest of the paint, you know, you could have issues there. Mm-hmm. I figure the, the, the least issue I would have just a little, a little, uh, wax on it, put the, uh, hit, put the hinge back on it. And the other, the other little tip, if you have to undo those, those bolts or those screws, when you go to put the driver in there, Put the driver in there and tap it down with the little hammer. You know, you don't got to go get the sledgehammer. <laughs> Just tap it down inside there so that when you break it free, you don't take a chance of it skipping or, you know, jumping out and stripping that screw. If you just tap it down in there a little bit and then break it free, you really got to look hard to see if you've had those screws out or not. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. And don't, and don't go in with the, with your, uh, with your uh, bit in the, in the cordless drill. Right. Th- this is all by hand. Yeah. And would you think that maybe having some uh, touch up paint uh, handy to t- kind of touch up those, uh, those bolt bolt heads just in case, you know, truthfully, I didn't on mine. I couldn't see that. And yeah. I think that the, I think that the, the touch up paint would probably stand out more because I've never seen that touch up paint look exactly the same. Right. I was just thinking, and I saw too, you might want to use a hex head socket as opposed to a 12 point, a six point socket, because that's going to fit around the bolt better. Or you well, think those, it would those, are those, those are Torx heads. Oh, are they? Okay. I have to yeah. have a closer look. Yeah. Those are all Torx heads and it's, oh, yeah. the, uh, I see it on the door, on the door hinge. Here yeah. In the notes. So you got to, like I said, just, yeah, that makes take, that, take, that makes sense. Then what you're talking about tapping it in there. Yeah. That does make sense. Yeah. Just tap it in there. That way you can make sure it's seated well. And when you go to try to break it free, it doesn't skip out and strip everything or, you drive it across the hood because <laughs> it, it popped out. <laughs> Another warranty claim. So yep. the, the modern Wrangler and Gladiator, in turn, picked up a number of aluminum components in the latest generation. The aim was to cut weight, dumbasses, and improve yeah. efficiency in turn. The JL model hit the market with the aluminum hood, tailgate, and doors, while the main chassis is still uh, st- uh, steel. I mean, the good stuff is what the way I put it. Uh, By eliminating the use of steel in these components, there is no risk of rust, (laughs) but that doesn't mean there's no risk of corrosion. 
Typically, right. it uh, naturally forms a hardy aluminum oxide barrier on its surface. Unlike iron oxide, this layer is tough and remains bonded to the base material. However, under the right conditions, thank you, Jesus, uh, aluminum can still suffer a de- deterioris. De- 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 uh, I know that word, but I can't say it. Uh, uh, s- s- lots of yeah, <laughs> lots of corrosion. Yeah, corrosion. <clears throat> still, an improperly maintained and prepared uh, an aluminum panel should uh, hold up to regular environmental conditions with little or no corrosion for many years. So maybe you're the lucky one, you know, like the 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 one the first one off yeah. Friday night. The, the one uh, yeah. the one three point eight that lasts for over a hundred thousand miles. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, this is something that's uh, warrantied. And do, do you remember a mileage or was it a mileage or a time that for you, Gary? Uh, uh, Larry, not Gary. I'm Larry. Yeah. So it was, uh, <laughs> it was, I was over 100,000 miles. Oh, okay. So it wasn't by much, though. Was it something that came on sort of gradual? You saw one little bubble and then all of a sudden there was 10, or did it just one day you came out and there it was? <laughs> You know, it was actually one of those things someone had, I'd gotten a conversation with somebody and they were, they were talking about the bubbling around the hinges and they're like, yeah, good thing I got that. And when I looked at, looked at my Jeep, I'm like, son of a bitch. Mm-hmm. Wow. I got, I got it on all four doors and it, it's, it's stuck in the, the corners where, you know, I had waxed it before and I didn't see it. And I'm, I'm guessing that, you know, through all the trail rides and everything sure. else, and it all kind of gets hid. And, uh, you know, in the black, mm. it was it was bubbled up. If you were looking for it, you would see it. But Interesting. Uh, you couldn't see it. Other, uh, at least I didn't see it otherwise. Right. So uh, one of the, and we were talking about this earlier, one of the prime ways aluminum can corrode is when it comes into contact with a different type of metal. This referred to as galvanic corrosion or dissimilar metal corrosion. This has led to wide, widespread belief that the, in the Jeep community that the hinges themselves are the problem. Uh, endless videos and forum posts claim that Jeep's combination of steel hinges with aluminum doors is the root cause of the corrosion issue. But Larry, again, you said you saw corrosion where there were no hinges. Yeah, I had it on my hood, right? And, and that was just behind the, uh, the latch. And it wasn't even in the area where the latch was at. It was right along that bottom edge of the hood. It hmm. was kind of just rolling up. So, you know, I, I, there was really no other contact with anything in that area. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And just to be clear, because uh, when you said hood earlier, I thought it was where the hinge is attached to the hood. This wasn't anywhere no. close to the hinge. There wasn't any, it wasn't anywhere close to uh, dissimilar metals touching. It was just on the front of the hood. Yeah. So, Driver's side, if you look at where the actual latch is at, you were to come back about three inches, and it was kind of rolling up around the corner and cr- creeping up the hood. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not looking forward to seeing it on the uh, on the uh, the Gladiator. So, so is that is that covered under warranty, Larry, or is it? I mean, because if if Jeep knows this is happening, maybe they'll go back to all steel. Well, they're not going to go back to all steel because you know the weight reduction. Because I think they, I think the JL was two hundred pounds lighter, if if I remember the numbers correctly. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it was all warranty item. Okay. And uh, reminder, uh, it was just a little over a hundred thousand miles on the the warranty for for you, uh, Larry. Correct. Um, well, and, and you're not having any. I don't think I didn't see anything. This report is the only thing with the the JK, but the JK I don't think has aluminum doors and hood and everything, does it? Nope. No, they were all steel. Yeah. Mine's all steel. Yeah. <clears throat> and you haven't had any corrosion issues or rust with yours. I mean, you are in California, but you haven't had That's any problems. That's right. Yeah. Nope. Nope. All right. So I think I've asked you this, uh, the, you guys this before. Have either one of you been to the Toledo Jeep Fest? Nope, but it's yep. on our list. <laughs> yeah. So, Larry, uh, how many times have you gone? Has it just been one or more? We've been here twice now. Wow. Okay. Was it two years in a row? Yes. Very, yeah. Very so cool. uh, the last the last two years I've been, and uh, it was kind of nice. Hung out with uh, one of my teammates, Chip and uh, and Chris, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, it was a good time. I mean, it's not it's not a wheeling event, no. so it lets you know how other other jeepers, you know, how they enjoy their jeeps. Not everybody is a wheeler, but you know, you see a lot of uh, interesting mods, and you know, those, those 
they still mod their Jeeps out for what they want to do with it. And it's really a good time there in downtown Toledo. Nice. Well, with uh, Larry and Chris, and I don't know if Chip's going this year, you can join the wave. The Toledo Jeep Fest is coming. The annual event is August 2nd through the 4th in downtown Toledo. Kick things off with the Glass City Crawlers block party on Friday night. Start the fun Saturday with the Yark All Jeep Parade. And um, <clears throat> I'm going to start the whole thing over. I lost my spot. So go out there with uh, Larry. Uh, Larry, are you going this year? Um, I'm, I'm thinking I am. Okay. I know, <laughs> yeah. I know Chris had talked to me that last year. He he camped underneath the one bridge that's in the area. Mm-hmm. They they section off a whole area, and then you, you can camp underneath the bridge down by the river. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it's pretty neat. So you can join uh, Chris and Larry, because I know Chris is going, uh, to join the wave at the Toledo Jeep Fest. Uh, which is coming up here in August. The annual event is August 2nd through the 4th, downtown Toledo. Kick things off with the Glass City Crawlers block party on Friday night. Start the fun Saturday with the Yark All Jeep Parade. All Jeep Indoor Exhibit, the Park and Shine Car Show, and the Vendor Midway. Live music, delicious food, and lots of fun for the entire family. More than 1,500 Jeeps from off-road warriors to historic classics will be front and center as Jeep uh, Jeepers invade downtown Toledo. More details at ToledoJeepFest.com. I, I envy you guys because this just uh, I, I've I've talked to Whitney and uh, Jerry, the uh, two of the uh, event coordinators uh, for this every year uh, for the last seven or eight years, and it just sounds like a fascinating thing to do. And of course, whenever I asked about uh, uh, restaurants and stuff to eat around the area, they, oh yeah, lots of good ones and. Uh, so it's like a full featured thing. I mean, they have, they have food there at the, at the event as well, but there's also very nice restaurants that you can go to. Absolutely. You know, and, and I'll give everybody a little tip, right? So if you're, if you're worried about parking, when you come down there, bring your Jeep, sign up for the show and shine. Oh yeah. Just, just clean your Jeep up a little bit. It's, you're not going to get judged if it isn't, if it's not spotless, but it does give you a parking spot. And uh, it makes very it very cool. nice. Yeah, that's a good idea. And and the, and the vendor show, it's probably one of the best vendor shows I've been to. Hmm. And you know what? There's nothing wrong with the little parade either. No, no. I'm looking forward to watching. I got to watch it uh, last year. Uh, I think it, I think it was streamed on the ToledoJeepFest.com website, mm-hmm. and uh, I, I was watching it there. I didn't see Chris. I know Chris was running around out there. I told Chris he needs to be like man on the street where he's yeah. wandering around in between the Jeeps and uh, uh, <laughs> talking to people. Uh, they we pro- did get on the radio, though. They could probably a- escort him out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> get out of the road. <laughs> <laughs> What? Where's the noob? Noob! 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 Hey, newbie! Newbie! Noob Nugget. It's time for Newbie Nuggets. Well, I know we all love to get off-road, but you got to think sometimes, what kind of critters or animals are on the trails where you wheel? I'm waiting for it. (laughs) (laughs) Poor Tony. He's like, I want to see animals. Well, here in Southern California in the Big Bear Mountains, we have several large animals, the black bear, Mountain lion and bobcat, although I've never seen any one of those three, um, but you, they are protected. Um, but you can see tracks where we do one of our training sessions for new, new newbies on the trail. Um, I'm always going, hey, here's bobcat tracks because people don't realize, you know, the cats have no claws. So dogs, when they're you're looking at dog paw prints and cat paw prints are about the same. But when you see there's no claws, it means it's a cat. So obviously not a real kitty, but the bobcats. So. It has claws, but they're retracted. Is that right? Correct. Yeah, that's correct. Sorry, I should clarify that for anybody who wasn't sure. But yes, when they walk, they don't have the claws out. So it's easy to distinguish what they are. And the bobcat's a little bit smaller, not than a house cat, but just it's interesting to see. But So those are good to know that you have. You certainly want to um, pay attention. <laughs> Most animals already know that we're, that you're there before you ever even know that they're present. So most of those, the mountain lion, bobcat, and the, and the black bear, they're going to disappear pretty quickly. You're, you're not even going to probably realize that they're around. Um, other critters that we have, I've uh, got a lot of coyotes, Oof, a lot of stuff up here, 
a lot of deer, a lot of lizards, a lot of jackalopes. For those of you who don't know, that's the bunny rabbits. <laughs> Give me a <laughs> they break. Have the, they have the big, huge ears. I'm serious. Oh, okay, old... I thought you about the ones that we have here in Texas that they're called jackalopes and they have like horns, like deer horns. horns. Oh, yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> uh, now the deer. I thought, you... <laughs> I thought she was going for snipes there for a second. <laughs> yeah, just a little bit. Well, oh, I should have almost. Um, the, the biggest com- problem with those that I just listed is the deer because they tend to, you know, cross the highways and the roads. So you see a lot of that happening at dawn or dusk. You need to be aware if you're out wheeling that you might run across that. And I have actually had a deer fly across our hood, wished I had the, uh, the GoPro cool. on at yeah. the time because that would have been just gold. I mean, that would have been money. Everybody wouldn't see that. That was an incredible sight. Just the right timing. It didn't hit the window, didn't hit the 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 hood. It just went across, jumped over, and kept on going. So you just never know on those kind of things. We've also got some squirrels, chipmunks, rabbits, and, of course, the ever-loving donkeys that are up here. Those yeah, things yeah. are so <laughs> smart. I mean, they're crazy. So they're not native. Um, they're not good for our environment, and there's no natural hunters to take them down. So it that is a bit of a you- problem. That was one you guys showed me when I was out there wheeling with you guys mm-hmm. is donkeys. Now, every country boy is going to say, yeah, no dud, city boy. But when you sh- yeah. when you showed me that their eyes don't reflect light. Right. It, it was amazing. I was like, I thought they all did. I did, too. Yeah, no, it's interesting. So you can be driving down the road and not even realize that they're on the side of the road. They don't they don't fear anything. So you literally could run into them because you don't see them. There's no reflection, no reflective coat their eyes don't you know like you'll see in a coyote you'll see deer you know any of that you would see the reflection in the eyes but not them so you gotta slow down when you're in the evening time around here and they're super smart like our trash on our street is picked up on tuesday mornings anybody who puts their trash out on monday the next morning the donkeys have come and t- took over the cans it's so <laughs> ridiculous people leave them inside take them out tuesday morning <laughs> So we've also got snakes, Um, obviously rattlesnakes, gopher, garter, and king snakes. But the rattlesnakes up here in the mountains are black in color. They're not the typical brown desert that we're used to for those of us who are native to California. I grew up with them and they're brown. So that was interesting because I probably would have been like, what kind of a snake is that? You know, get nailed. But my message to you guys is do not disturb the wildlife. When you're out wheeling and you're doing stuff, Don't be leaving food for them. Don't try to feed them. No matter what the dang squirrels are saying, do not feed them. Um, That makes them dependent on humans and they pretty much will be, will be dead. So, and you don't need to be leaving food because it brings them closer to the habitat. And, you know, people are complaining that the coyotes up here are taking all their little dogs. Well, stop letting them out at night, people put them on a leash. Seriously. So anyway, so what, what do you got, Larry? You got to have some critters, something else. Well, I wheel with the critter, so well, that's but, you know, true. but every area is like you said, got their their coyotes. We got coyotes all over the place here too. Yeah. And and you'll even see a few uh I'll, I'll say mountain lions and stuff like that. You know, we're we're fairly close to the Ozarks area here in Missouri. Oh, sure. So you get a lot. So you get a lot of that stuff. And you know, we even We'll, you'll even get an occasional black bear, something like that. But those are kind of rare because right. they hear you. They go running. But like you said, they're foraging. They're trying to find your food. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, for the most part, most of the critters out there, if you leave them alone, they leave you alone. But they're Absolutely. always trying to, you know, they're just like us, too. They all want something to eat. That's right. <laughs> How about you, Tony? I, I, really, I really can't think of anything. I mean, uh, I would say deer, especially in uh, East Texas. Um, okay. Anytime you get uh, start driving in kind of a wooded area uh, at night, it's very dark. Well, don't you have cows? Because we do have some free range cattle in some of our trails up here. But you probably have cattle that you have to be concerned about, right? We have cows that get out of their their area. Yeah, uh, exactly. And, and those are really fun when you run into them. Uh, I've never had a, an, an instant <laughs> like that. Yeah. But uh, I, uh, my uh, high school uh, friend uh, did. He and his his dad hit one. They had a, I think it was a seventy three Nova that totaled uh, was totaled because they were at highway speeds and the uh, yeah of course the cow it's had just good. gotten out uh, of uh, the its uh, fenced in area and it was right there. Uh, actually, it was Highway two twenty five uh, in the Pasadena wow. area, and uh, yeah, they uh, totaled that uh, that uh, that Nova. And, uh, but everybody was okay, but still, I mean, you can well imagine what are those things like 2000 pounds or something? 
could uh, be depending on you know what kind of what brand it is yeah the uh, i think the o'donnell's are the two thousand pound ones um so uh but uh, really i mean we don't have any bear at least not in the in southeast texas that i'm aware of uh mm -hmm. never seen any uh, big cats other than uh, bobcats and uh, and actually i know they're in the area but i've never seen one mm -hmm. um so uh yeah i would say deer is probably the most prevalent uh kind of wildlife that we have out here which makes the deer hunters very happy absolutely and you usually can go to like we have a discovery center that the forest service puts together with a list of you know sort of the tracks so if you want to be out and you're doing a little hiking while you're wheeling and you want to know what kind of tracks you're running into that's kind of cool too so that I, you can i can't see i can't see the tracks from the uh safety and air conditioning of my jeep <laughs> of the jeep <laughs> <laughs> i said if you like to but, hike while but, you wheel but you if heard I, me say that right if i set up a camera <laughs> that i might be able to do that maybe i don't know it's kind of fun it's just you know all of a sudden you're walking realizing hey look at the size of this foot i've actually been on horseback up here and seen bear print that's a little disconcerting when you're on back of a horse i'm really surprised well, you're, in, you're in big bear <laughs> yeah true. This I'm, true. i'm really surprised that more people aren't concerned about being in areas that have uh, mountain lions and uh, bears roaming around because uh, well let me ask you this don't all those animal animals have the ability to uh, get uh, rabies? I don't know. Because I'm yeah, thinking, I... even if a, a a bear is going, if it hears you, it's going to take off. Well, if it has rabies, it may not. I I don't I don't know because I mean there's all kinds of things that get transferred, but I don't I don't know if that goes from animal to animal. Mm -hmm. I, I'm probably I just overly know. concerned because I've never been in the environment. Once you get into the yeah. environment and you never see one of these animals, or if you do, they take off. Well, and and a lot of us wheelers, you know, up here, we're never going to see these guys. We're going to see a snake possibly. Mm -hmm. um, you're definitely going to see deer, definitely rabbits. The jackalopes are everywhere, and a squirrel or a chipmunk, depending on where you're saying. The rest of it is hard. Even the donkeys rotate through. There'll be times that I'm on a regular trail that you should see them and you don't see them. They're, they've moved to another field or another area. So I like donkeys. Um, I think donkeys are cool. And the snakes, you know, as long as you're careful when you, it's usually when you use the restroom, you know, you're going to walk away from the Jeep, you're off the road, you're going to go on, you know, some scrub and you're just watch where you put your feet, make sure that you're, you know, taking care of that. So, so you, most of us don't even know or see this, these guys at all. Yeah. Do you ever use, uh, uh, not leggings, but you know, the snake bite? Uh, plastic things that you can put around your your legs. So if you happen upon a snake and it attacks you, you never use those things. I'm pretty sure if I did, Tony, they wouldn't wheel with me anymore. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, no, I've pressure. never heard of that. <clears throat> but you know, a lot of that is you just get used to it. When I'm riding horses my whole life, you have to know where you're stepping and where you're putting that horse to. to as I say, sticks with lips is what we call them. So you you know, we're just ingrained to look for stuff like that. Walk in clear areas. Don't be walking in heavy brush. Right. You know, and time of the, you know, right now it's so dang hot. They're not out right now in the middle of the daytime, so you're fine. But dawn and dusk, they're going to come out, so you have to be really careful. So, yeah, they got to go out there and heat themselves up for the day. Yeah, and then we've talked about first aid kits and trauma kits and things like that. Do either of you guys carry snake bite kits or anything to nope. be able to? Nope. Not me. Nope. No, I know I don't either. I just stay away from them. So anyway, Larry but, has uh, a a Duke bite kit. So whenever he's uh, he grabs yeah. a sandwich a little too aggressively, <laughs> yeah. Well, and they actually do training for uh, dogs so that right. the dogs don't go after the snakes, which we do a oh, lot that's out here. Neat. I didn't know about R that. That's snake. great. Yeah, it's kind of neat. It's like three different stations, and so the dog first it sees. Then it, you know, it hears, sees, and smells, or whichever one that is. And by the third station, the dog is not interested at all, ever. So it's pretty neat the way they do that. But yes, you can get your dogs trained for rattlesnakes. And I would recommend that if you have dogs on the trail, that you are traversing in areas that the snakes are prevalent, which is really big uh, down in our desert areas. You'll see that a lot down there. So cool. Yep. Well, very cool. call in and let us know what kind of animals you guys might have. If they're different from what we are, I'm sure there's people in the North get moose, black bear or a uh, grizzly bear. We don't, we don't have that in California. And there's probably some other types of critters. I know, um, what is it in Arizona? They have the javelina. So, oh yeah. Those things are, we have yeah. javelinas here too. Now that I think about you, it. Yeah. And you guys have in Texas, the, uh, what are they bunnies in the astronaut suits? What do they call those darn things? <laughs> Alien, aliens no 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 they have those uh ah they're not anteaters come on tony you know what they are they have like that hard shell on them they look kind of armadillos. funny armadillos thank you that's it they, yeah we used to call bunnies, them bunnies bunnies in a space bunnies. suit 
in a spacesuit. Yeah, think about it. Yeah, we got those up here too. So when you yeah. see an armadillo on the side of the road, that's uh, that's dinner on a half shell. <laughs> anyway, mm. <laughs> all right. Well, call in, check it, check it out. Let us know what you have in your area. I'd love to hear. Uh, kind of armadillos, oh, there, raccoons. But... Uh, oh yeah, we and have a few uh, of those. yeah, you, you've uh, you've generated some rem- memories here. And uh, we actually have uh, we get raccoons here in the yard, squirrels. I don't know where the squirrels come from, and um, not armadillos. What is it? It's the um, possum. Not the possum. Oh yeah, yeah. We well, those, possums those are actually great. Possums take care of fleas and all kinds of critters. Oh, yeah. They're an awesome. Yeah, raccoons not so much. Yeah, <laughs> those guys yeah. are just they're into everything. I like so them. Bad. Trash. Yeah. yeah, trash panda. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I, I like them. They're they're pretty cool. But well, you don't want one as a pet. They get into everything. Mm-hmm. No, you don't. So there you go. Welcome to Fabricating Frenzy with Larry, also known as Jeeping Mo, whose hair is not curly. Okay, so we all carry a bunch of wrenches and sockets and screwdrivers for that unwanted breakdown on a trail. Mm -hmm. But depending on how new or how seasoned your rig is, there are some other tools that cross over all the years to help you diagnose what your issue is or helps fix the issue you did not expect. (laughs) So we're going to go over a couple of these tools here. So one thing that plagues all Jeeps are electrical issues and sometimes more than others. First one is a multimeter. Now it can be just used to test voltages, continuity for those broken wires, check voltages. And for your older Jeeps, it's easy, it's 12 volts. But for the newer Jeeps, it helps you look for single volts on and see why some systems are not working. Because, you know, on a newer Jeep, you're sometimes only looking for a volt here and a volt there. Then the next is a wiring diagram. Because, you know, there is a good companion to the multimeter. It, It does you no good to check for wires if you don't know where they're going. So smart. Yeah. And, you know... That wiring diagram, on your older vehicles, it's pretty easy. You just look for the one here, then it goes to somewhere else. But on the newer Jeeps, they go into the spaghetti factory, if you will, of wires. (laughs) You have no idea where they went in or no idea where they came out. Now, one I like is a spark checker. Now, if uh, these are made so you can unplug your, your either your coil or your spark plug wire, and it just plugs in in between. Okay. And what it lets you let you know if if you see the little light that's flashing, it tells you you've got at least you got spark going to that, hmm. you know, to that plug. Now the old trick of holding the spark plug while you're you're grounding it against the block on the older vehicles those were fine, but when you when you've got a coil pack in your hand and you're trying to figure this out and it's really hitting it hard. <laughs> and you get and you get electrocuted a few times, <laughs> and, and, and you know that that spark checker. It's it's only a few bucks, and it's something you can throw in your box, and it's real easy on diagnostics. So then, just some basic wire connectors. Now you never know when you might need to splice a wire or repair a wire, or that wire that gets pulled out. And I'm thinking lockers. That you know, you need, and you'll also need a set of crimpers or wire strippers to go along with all those because you just never know when when you're going to have to splice or put something back together. And there's been times that I've had to cut a wire for diagnostics just to see, you know, what it is and try to put it back together. And then a set of wire jumpers, you know, these are just a set of alligator clips on, you know, on a set of wires, and then you can use these to connect from one area to another if you're just trying to ch- see if you get a, if you can power something up or not and it's very easy you can you can go buy a set or you can just once again just buy put some alligator clips on a on a couple wires and put them in your toolbox you know it works out good and then the scanner you now a simple scanner that can check inputs and outputs now obviously we're talking about newer jeeps here and that way they can help see if the components are either getting a signal or they're sending the signal out. And that way it helps you try to figure out what you're looking for. And at times, you know, on a newer Jeep, you might try to see if it's, you may think that it's putting out, let's say, 
you know, four volts. Well, that's where the scanner and the meter, you can see if they're agreeing, because if they're not, obviously there's an issue there. And on the newer, on the newer Jeeps, you know, there's a lot of electrical systems there. So never underestimate how electrical issues can get you. They can be hard <laughs> to find, and they can cause a lot of problems on a trail. You know, not everything is a broke drive shaft. Yeah, darn it. So, Larry, is it uh, does it make things more difficult because of CAN bus? Because now you're dealing with electrical signals that are varying, uh, and if you if you're looking at it on a, a voltage meter, it'll show a much lower voltage than than what you would Absolutely, expect to say. Does. Yeah, because it's a yeah that, a signal that's going up and down, and you're seeing what the average is. Right, and that's where on a newer vehicle, a, a scanner, so that you could possibly purposely trigger something, right? Or, or or you can look at a module and say, I've got so many volts in and so many volts out, and maybe you can go verify it, you know, because otherwise, to your point, CAN bus really kind of mucks all that up. You can't just, <laughs> yeah. you just can't go in there with a, with a probe and, and see what's going on. And, and, you know, here's a little, a little warning for people that, if you're running an older vehicle, a lot of us like these hot probes that you can apply power to certain things and make it work. If you're running a newer vehicle, you better be very careful. You don't apply power to that airbag because <laughs> <laughs> it's going pop goes the weasel. Yeah. Oh my exactly. gosh. And then there, and then there's that scream from your passenger next door. What the? <laughs> yeah. You get sucker punched right in the head. Those aren't Dang. pillows. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, very, very, very cool. cool. Yep. Yeah, that's a good that's a good list, Larry. Thank you for doing that. Mm -hmm. From the mind of Nikki G. Hey, this is Nikki G. And uh, last night I was on a phone call with Chuck, and we were discussing many things. Mostly we were talking about why NASA removed Pluto as a planet. That's not <laughs> fair. But Chuck told me his ranch is so big that if he starts to drive across it at noon, he won't get to the other side until midnight, which I thought was <laughs> odd because I didn't know truck drove a Ford. Well, that's not why I'm calling. <laughs> oh, I'm calling to tell you that I had a dream last night that I was a muffler. Yeah, oh, I really woke up exhausted. Yep. All right, boys oh, and girls, boy. I'll chat you later and have a good one. Bye. <sighs> Just a sad sigh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I did well, like the last pleasure. year. It Last year it was eighteen percent. This year it's you know whatever whatever you get. I think he thinks it's got a reset because of the new year. I, I, I'm, <laughs> Is that I'm what guessing. It was? Yeah. Uh, I still like it. I still like to laugh. Thank you, Nikki G. Oh yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> All right, so we're excited to announce that we have uh, on our next interview episode Tyler from All Roads Taken. I've talked a little bit about this on the our Discord server. Uh, Larry, do you know what I'm uh, what I'm talking about? All Roads Taken. Did you see that conversation on Discord? No, I did not. So this is a group that they have, um, it's, they don't call them honor badges, but that's the easiest way to understand what, what it is. It's like a Jeep honor badge, but it's not just for Jeep. It's for anybody that goes to a destination. I mean, even if you're just, okay. even if you're like, uh, you're just taking your RV, uh, out right. there and you go to these places, you can put a badge on your RV because you've been to this, uh, this place. Oh, uh, very cool. cool. Yeah. They do custom badges too. Uh, for example, we could have had uh, Jeep Talk Show uh, badges. Oh, the Hidden Falls, yeah. No, no, for uh, like uh, for EJS. So oh, and we had twenty three people there. We could have actually wow. had badges made for EJS twenty twenty four, and then everybody that attended part of the JTS. I mean, it would say JTS, uh, you know, uh, honor badge, and then it would yeah, actually be year. on there. I, I just think it's kind of cool. Now these that is cool. these aren't the same price as the Jeep badges because the Jeep badges are free. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> These cost well, a little bit. But, uh, I mean, you, you got to be buying, you got to be spending some money. And I guess if you spend money on a Jeep, you can get a free badge, which really isn't a free badge, but mm -hmm. you don't have to pay anything extra. You've already bought the Jeep. So this is good for Toyotas or side-by-sides, a, a whole host of people that uh, would uh, might Very like cool. to have an honor badge, but they don't have a Jeep. So I thought it was really cool. And you can learn more about it uh, coming up this Friday. Yep, check it out. All right, so must have stuff for your Jeep. Uh, as promised, this is, and you guys can see in the picture here, you guys go to jeeptalkshow.com and just uh, look for the show notes for this episode. Uh, top lift, I was, well, I'm sorry, what I was going to say is you can see that they have a woman taking this top off. 
So I see it. They literally have a woman taking taking the top off. Get uh, it? Yeah. I so, got it. but unfortunately, it's a Bronco that they're showing. Uh, yeah, of course. I, I didn't notice that initially because of the the girl that they're using. Um, yeah. <laughs> but top you, lift pros. All of you guys will not see that there's a vehicle in the picture because <laughs> yeah. of the girl they're using. She looks like she needs help. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, <laughs> top lift pros, lift and go, hard top removable removal and storage system compatible with Jeep Wrangler two and four door. Uh, YJ, TJ, JK, JL, 4xE, and compatible with Ford, Bronco, 4-door, and 6-gen hardtop. Uh, it is a jack roll system. It's $629.99. Wow. Is that a normal price just for taking the top off? Because I know there are other types of companies out there. I don't know of anybody that price. has one that, that you do it by yourself. Okay, got it. Or, or one that you don't buy a system that it mounts in your garage. And, you know, yeah. either has a, a pulley type thing you use right. or uses a, a drill uh, to, you know, a thing or has a, a dedicated uh, electric winch. Um, well, this is amazing because there's a lot of women out there wheeling now and they probably want to take their tops off. Sure. So, <laughs> Yahoo. <laughs> no, Larry, you can't move on because this is what we're talking <laughs> about. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Larry, he's like, what the hell? <laughs> so the Lift & Go is a leading hard top removal system and storage system. And it's the thing I want to point out. This is a storage system as well. So you're so not holds, taking the top wow. off with this and then dropping the top someplace. You, right. You leave it on there. That's awesome. Which frankly scares the hell out of me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because that's, you know, that's the problem with the top. It isn't that it's heavy. Uh -uh. It's awkward. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, and if it falls, it's even going to be more awkward, <laughs> especially if it falls on your Jeep. Uh, but the, well, there is that. Yeah, in the in the this is uh, available on Amazon. Uh, we'll have the link in the show notes. But uh, what they do is they show uh, once the top is off, it stays on the rack. I think they lower it down a bit, uh, but they put it in front of the Jeep in the garage, so the the top is literally over the hood of the Jeep. Oh, I see. So yeah, now you sense. can still keep everything in your garage, but you're going to be moving this the, this out of the way before you before you leave. I, I, I guess you could put it in front of the Jeep and you pull up. And it's just in front of the Jeep and you back out and you don't have to worry about it. But still, this is like the bears out on the trail. This scares the yeah. hell out of me. <laughs> <laughs> it's, on we it's on wheels, at least. Just make oh, yeah. sure you don't run over that rock. Exactly. Or, uh, yeah, or looks, a zip tie. It looks really cool. I mean, it looks really great. It'd be easy for anybody to do by themselves. I think this is a great item. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, uh, it, of course it isn't just put this thing in there and lift it. You got to take all the bolts out and disconnect the wiring harness. If you have a uh, windshield wiper and uh, so on and so forth on there. So it's, mm -hmm. it's not super simple, but it, it makes it more pl plausible for a single person, uh, to be able to do this. It's hydraulics, it's, uh, angles, uh, it's levers. So yeah, you don't have to be a, a he-man to be able to do this. Um, they also do this one. This one does not work for the Jeep Gladiator. They do have one for the Gladiator, but it's a thousand dollars. But it works uh, the same same way. I guess the top is significantly different on the Gladiator than, uh, especially like the four door Wranglers. It's a lot smaller, um, and uh, so uh, I mean, I'm not buying one, but but I was kind of interested when I was seeing that because it'd be nice to be able to take the top off the Gladiator and not have to worry about it sitting in the front yard <laughs> while yeah. You, you or or on the floor or in the garage, and then you can't park the, the vehicle in there. Yeah. yeah. I'm curious about how, I'm curious how that one works. Let's look at that because obviously the pickup points are going to be totally different on the gladiator because you don't have that back window to flip up. They well, hook exactly. it on the rain gutters. It attaches Ooh. to the rain gutters. Yes. Ooh. Yes. But I was too. I was like, well, how are they doing this? And you could see it attaches to the, the little rain thing on the side of the, of the top. Hmm. Okay. I know. But they, you know, it works. <laughs> so again, just uh, check out the show notes for this episode and uh, you'll see the link uh, to Amazon there uh, in the show notes. All right. My little, quick little announcement here. The 30% off Patreon subscription sale has come to an end. Uh, I told you that it was going to be a limited number of, uh, a limited number of subs subscriptions available for a limited yeah. time. Now, here's some hope. There is one <laughs> slot left. One? Oh my gosh. Yeah. Two no. Yep. So, hurry up, hurry so up. when it's purchased, that will be the end of the sale. You see how Got I did it. it? I said it was over. I like But it. then I gave you hope. You, yeah, there's hope. <laughs> Almost like a Oh my God, I gotta buy this. I gotta hurry up and buy yeah. it. 
That's right, Larry. It's like the Hemi. There's hope. I just, I just ruined the whole thing. I know. <laughs> so we have one slot left. When it's purchased, that's the end of the sale. Get in and get that last one. Just go to jeeptalkshow.com slash contact to find out how to subscribe. So 30% off, it's $3.50. Uh, I would uh, purchase it for a year so you have that price locked in. You purchase it for a month, that's how long it's going to last. Yeah. <laughs> hey, thanks for listening to this episode of the Jeep Talk Show. If you've enjoyed the show, please leave us a rating and review on your favorite podcast platform. Your feedback helps us improve the show and reach more Jeep enthusiasts like yourself. Also, don't forget to follow us on Instagram uh, and sign up for our email newsletter to stay up to date on the latest uh, Jeep news and events. Finally, if you have any questions or comments or ideas for future episodes, we'd love to hear from you. Go to jeeptalkshow.com slash contact, and you'll find multiple ways to contact us. Don't forget to look look for us on YouTube. We're getting a lot That's more right. views. And uh, you can even see Greg Henderson, uh, with, uh, with Larry, and Wendy, and uh, uh, Chip gets on there, Bill gets on there, and it's just a great place to see the, the host for the Jeep Talk Show. Hey, thanks again for listening, and we'll see you on the next episode of the Jeep Talk Show. Broadcasting since 2010. I need to start using my left hand to wave so I can be different from you guys. <laughs> if we did it all in sync, that would be even it, was, worse. it was pretty much in sync. You know, I was going, ah, oh, no, no, same side. Yeah, it was... <laughs> you're my friend. You're my new friend. <laughs>